Hey friends, welcome to Headspace. Uh, today I want to talk to you about the five things, um, the things that mattered the most, um, that helped me go from heartbroken to heartfelt. And the backstory is this, is that, um, you know, I was really terrible at romance, really, really, really bad, for a whole number of reasons I'm not going to go into. But you know, this feeling that you get when you fail over and over and over again in in something important, you know? And um, then something shifted. And it was sort of a sequence of things for me. And that sequence of things have transformed my life into someone who does not believe they can build a long-term romantic relationship or a family to someone who has been married for over 20 years and have an incredible, wonderful marriage, loving kids. Uh, and it's just a massive shift for me. And uh, and I've been, and I always love sharing what it helped me, uh, what really mattered, you know? I mean, there's a thousand things that matter, but I wanna share five things, okay? There's more, obviously. But number one is that faith matters. And I think the reason for that is because if you find space in your life, to connect with something that a purpose that is higher than yourself and find patterns that are timeless patterns that are just universally true. Um, it just changes the way you think about life. And if you're stuck at a dead end with something specifically, in my in my situation, it was how do I date and marry and stay married, right? I didn't know any people that were very successful at that. And when I became a Christian and I started reading the Bible, it opened a whole new world for me. And not only that, but really submitting myself, I would say, yielding to the authority of a higher power, to Jesus, uh, was transformational because so many things that I had to learn, that I had to learn, were counterintuitive. They were, I pushed against it. It didn't make any sense to me. So you need to find something that you can submit to, you know. Uh, and for me, that was Jesus and the Bible and the authority of that that allowed me to sort of say, okay, I, I don't get it. I don't understand this, but I will try it. And I trust the process. So that's number one. Faith matters and it continues to matter, continues to shape our marriage and give us just endless happiness and joy in our life. Number two, chemistry matters. And here's how it all sort of connects, right? We all believe in this romantic, magical, rom-com type love. And Deb and I actually have that. And we met in Los Angeles at a conference and it was instant sparks and chemistry and it was wonderful. And I went on one date with her and, or like one and a half dates with her. And then I, I emailed her every day until she moved to another country to be with me. And we had a massive, beautiful marriage, uh, wedding rather. And, but here's the deal. Is it instant chemistry and luck and this is just one in a million type things we got lucky? I don't think that's true. I don't really think that's true at all. What happens is that this chemistry that happens in a moment is really the product of years of preconditioning, of years of, of sort of these mundane, daily, how does this work? How does romance work? How do you love a woman? How do you love a man? What are the roles? How do you love in general? How do you build relationships? How do you keep relationships? It's a lot of training. Um, it's a lot of sort of selecting your ecosystem that is around you. And it changes your inner game. And when your inner game changes, then your outer game changes. So that's number two. Number three, connected to the ecosystem, is that people matter, right? We had expert guidance. That's it. It's that simple. Both Deb and I had failed in love many, many times before, and this time around, we were determined not to mess it up, and we had mentors, friends, a lot of accountability, a lot of guidance, and we treated them not as people who were like keeping the loop in what our plans are. It's just very different to have advisors to having coaches, right? to being an apprentice to someone. And that's what we did. We were apprentices to, to, to amazing people, and we were fortunate enough to have people willing to coach us. And, um, and that accelerates things, that gives you structure, that gives you continuity, that gives you win after win after win, and it sort of builds upon itself. So people matter, and investing in that, I, I just can't overstate the importance of that. Number four, resilience matters. And resilience is, is 
this ability to interpret an obstacle, um, a trauma, a traumatic event, a bump that you've hit in the road, and keep going, learning something from it and keep going. It's a huge, hugely important skill. And as a matter of fact, I don't think you should expect to learn resilience as you're involved in a romantic relationship. It's much better to learn it before. So in my, in my mind, look, if you haven't learned resilience yet, learn that first, then date, then marry. And if you are um, interested in somebody romantically, find out if they have resilience, you know? Like if, if they don't have those skills, don't date them. And for sure, don't ever marry somebody who doesn't have resilience skills. This is, this is just central. Two people who are unresilient are not gonna make one person who is resilient, one marriage that's resilient. It just doesn't work that way. Two people have to be resilient. They have to have the tools. They have to have the coping skills, the growth patterns uh, that come from hitting an obstacle, okay, licking your wounds, learning from something, moving on. Number five, rhythms and rituals matter. See, here, here's the deal. Life always trends towards chaos. That's just a universal truth, right? So your ability to create organizing efforts that will constrain your life and structure it and make it beautiful, make it zen, make it make sense uh, is absolutely crucial. And rhythms and habits, you, you know, you can call it all kinds of things, but basically the systems to use to organize your life, those are the things that matter. Now, what am I talking about specifically? Um, contemplative times every day, reading, uh, studying scripture, ancient wisdom, prayer lives, um, re times of, of Sabbath, of rest, of rejoicing, being able to sleep well, right? Um, for romantic couples, it's going on dates. I mean, we never miss a date every single week, sometimes more than once a week. Um, getting away, having these breaks that you can recharge, going on vacation more than once a year. Um, so I can list, rattle off all kinds of other sub rhythms that are even feeding into the rhythms that we already have. But these are the things that you, if you invest in those things and you keep them, you maintain them, you nurture them, you change them, you tweak them. Over time, your systems define the success you rise to. Not your ambitions, not your aspirations, not your dreams, but your systems. And those rhythms and rituals that you establish for your life with the help of mentorship, of mentors, of coaches, of people who are around you, your friends, your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Together, over time, you build something that is predictably leading you towards flourishing. Does that make sense? So once again, to repeat, faith matters. It gives you a higher perspective and an authority over you, which is really important because sometimes you are not able to be your own authority, right? It's just impossible. You're objectively subjective. Chemistry matters, but chemistry is preconditioned, right? People matter. Investing in people with quality relationships and being a disciple a, a, a learner from somebody else in an in a organic, healthy, powerful way is huge. Resilience matters. The, the skills to overcome obstacles, trouble will find you. I can guarantee you that. And if you don't know how to deal with trouble, you're not going to do well in a romantic relationship or in a marriage. It's just true. Rhythms and rituals, habits, the things that you do that are systems in your life that you do without thinking, that are just happening, that are all beneficial, healthy habits to creating you a flourishing, well-rounded person. And if you see that how these things may factor in into a romantic relationship, you will understand why I am heart-filled. I'm not heartbroken. We have bumps every once in a while. Sometimes you have a bad conversation, a fight, you figure it over, you reconcile. But I am in love, constantly in love every day uh, for years and decades. And I expect to be in love for the rest of my life. And I'm secure in my marriage and have zero fear of the future when it comes to being heart filled. And it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. And I wish that for you, my friend. And if this is helpful to you, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the Headspace YouTube channel, which really helps us. Um, not only create more content like this, but also invite friends, experts, 
um, that are amazing, right? I, I, I really strive to find the top people in the world to speak to about certain things. And I'm lucky enough to have them on my podcast. So more subscriptions, it's easier for me to invite people. So please subscribe. I also have a newsletter that goes out every Saturday, at least at this point, christianrayflores.com. If you subscribe to that, I create content there as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening, for paying attention. I hope this has helped you, blessed you, given you ideas.